Hello, my name is Warren Groff. I grew up as a third generation piano technician restoring grand pianos in my father's shop and I took many years of piano and organ lessons. I also took electronics courses throughout high school and at the University of Colorado I majored in electrical engineering and music. I was first introduced to MIDI when Yamaha came out with the DX7. I realized that the sounds of this keyboard could be played by a pedal board that sent MIDI information to it. Through the years I hoped that a manufacturer would implement this idea and build a performance oriented 32 note concave radiating MIDI controller pedal board. A pedal board that would allow a performer to play all the great pipe organ works as well as other music forms with today's full synthesizer sounds. For years I wanted a pedal board like this but no one ever built it. Because I'm a musician the pedal board I built is performance oriented, user friendly and has all the features a musician would want. The pedal board is able to accomplish such basic tasks as select patch numbers, bank numbers, MIDI channel numbers and transpose. Additionally, this pedal board was designed to include features that are very necessary but aren't as obvious unless you have experience with playing pipe organ music and MIDI capable keyboards. For example, there are three bank switches labeled 16 foot, 8 foot, and 4 foot that can be used in any combination so that a user may play as many as three notes an octave apart simultaneously. Much like intermanual couplers on a pipe organ that couple ranks of pipes of a manual to the pedals. I've designed the circuitry so that these switches may be turned on or off even while a pedal is held down and there will be a note on message or a note off message without a MIDI glitch. This bank switch feature is unique and absolutely necessary for a full sound when playing big footnote passages. Another necessary feature of the pedal board is its ability to be either velocity sensitive or non-velocity sensitive. There are two MIDI output jacks on the rear panel of the pedal board. One is a full time output for the default velocity curve of the pedal board. The other jack is switchable from the full time default velocity curve to a programmable velocity curve which can be a fixed MIDI velocity number to defeat velocity sensitivity. In cases such as pipe organ music, velocity sensitivity is not desirable. But there are occasions in slower moving passages with other voicings where velocity sensitivity is an asset. At the push of a button the pedal board can toggle between being velocity sensitive and non-velocity sensitive. Also by using the two output jacks it's possible for the pedal board to be simultaneously velocity sensitive for one or more MIDI devices and non-velocity sensitive for others. In the center of the pedal board are three swell shoes and a space with hook and loop material for a sustained pedal or another swell shoe. The swell shoe on the left is a full-time pitch bend shoe with a spring-loaded center return position and it accomplishes the same function as a pitch bend wheel on a keyboard. The next swell shoe is a control swell shoe that can be assigned to one of five functions. It can control after touch, pitch bend without returning to a center position, modulation, volume, or left to right audio panning. Its default function is to control modulation. The next swell shoe is a full time volume swell shoe with a minimum volume level adjustment knob. This volume pedal has a separate plug and may be used in conjunction with the MIDI output of the pedal board or plugged directly into another keyboard or tone module to control it separately. The area to the right of the swell shoes can be used for either a sustain pedal or another volume swell shoe. If this area was used for another volume swell shoe, the user could independently control the sound level of as many as three devices. This would be done by assigning the control swell shoe to be a volume control and using the full time volume swell shoe and the optional volume swell shoe. In most cases I use this space for a sustain pedal so that I can play piano or other instruments requiring a sustain pedal. There are several market niches for this. One would be the church organist who would like to have something at home to practice that is rewarding, more portable, and considerably less expensive than a digital organ with a full pedal board. Also small churches that currently use keyboards for their service could now use this pedal board with their existing MIDI capable keyboard and play large organ works. This would have an added benefit of the keyboard player or organist minimizing their learning curve for a new instrument because they're already familiar with their present keyboard and its sounds. Another market would be any person that wanted to give a very animated performance with a third music voice, whether it be rock, jazz, or another music form. Almost as much can be played with both feet as with one hand. 
I think that the appropriate retail price of the pedal board would be between $3,000 and $3,500. A bench with a music storage compartment and a heel rest should sell at a retail price of $500 to $700, bringing the retail price of the pedal board and bench to about $4,000, a price I would have been thrilled to pay for this combination if it had been available. A three-tier keyboard stand is available for about $150, and if a musician already has a MIDI capable keyboard, they're set to go. If they don't have a MIDI capable keyboard, they are available from about $600, bringing the total cost to under $5,000, a price far less than digital church organs, which start at about $15,000. This modular arrangement with a keyboard and pedal board also offer far greater flexibility as far as available sounds, sound editing capability, and touch sensitivity. The pedal board also has a manufacturing benefit due to the fact that it would have the capability of a long production run. It will never be obsolete as long as there is MIDI. The sounds played from it will be as current as the device it's controlling. At this point in time, there is no competition for this pedal board because there is nothing like it on the market and I have patents pending. My goal is to sell my design to a manufacturer, assist them in any further development, and help in any area that would bring the pedal board into production and make it a profitable product. This pedal board is an opportunity for a manufacturer with vision as well as myself, a true win-win situation. I can be reached at area code 805-528-5331 or by email at pedalman.1 at juno.com. Thanks for your time and consideration. I look forward to hearing from you.